open your Bibles to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah is in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. The verses will be on the screen as well, but I want you to turn there, put your eyes on it. Nehemiah chapter 8, the word of the Lord came to me a few weeks ago regarding what the word was for us here at True Life Fellowship Church. And in verse 10, Nehemiah is talking here. Nehemiah is a prophet that is building a wall. Uh, he, he wants to go home to Jerusalem, and they want to reestablish a civilization there in Jerusalem. So they're building a wall to get the bad people not to come in. But you know also this wall also keeps people on the inside. But there's some bad people on the inside they need to get out. So the wall is built. Don't let bad people in. But then there's some of these bad people. We got to get them out of the mix, praise God. So as we see here, he's talking to the congregation after the wall has been built and talking about getting people that are bad on the inside. Go ahead and get them on the outside. But one thing he, he phrases here in verse 10, he says, and he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those from whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. Now watch this. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say this after me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so we see here that sorrow is counterproductive to strength. Sorrow actually makes you weaker and weaker and weaker. But the joy of the Lord will make you stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, joy of the Lord is not like strength. Joy of the Lord is your strength. So joy equals strength. The more joyful you are, the stronger you are. The more sad and depressed and filled with anxiety that you are, the weaker you are. So the joy of the Lord is adrenaline to our souls. The joy of the Lord is what allows us to have stamina and endurance and to continue with power. It's the joy of the Lord. And I believe the joy of the Lord has been a forgotten ingredient when we talk about being strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I've talked to many of people that say that they believe, but they're so sad, they're so depressed, they're so filled with frustration that you have to question, do they even believe? Because if you really believe, then you're going to be filled with joy. An indicator that you believe something is how joyful you are when you respond to what you have heard. And so you can say all day long that I got joy in my heart and with a, fat, a, a sad frown on your face. And I'm telling you, you are not full of joy if your countenance is full of anger and sadness and a frown. Praise God. If you believe the word of God, then you're filled with joy. A new question that Stacy and I ask each other around the house is, what are you excited about? What are you excited about? Stacey, what are you excited about? Devon, what are you excited about? Why? Because when we find out what we're excited about, that shows us where our faith is. And then where our faith is, we can begin to see mountains be moved and things rearranged and changed. We can then call things that be not as though they were when we know where our excitement lies. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is what gives you adrenaline to continue and to last. Now, there are times to be sad. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us there's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. Now, the weeping time should be very, very short. And the laughing time should be much, much more. Hallelujah. Right. Right. Time of sorrow should be very, very short. But then we have to roll over into the joy of the Lord so that we can receive strength from the Lord. Now, let's go to John chapter 15. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. John chapter 15. Let's look at verse 7. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, the fourth book of the New Testament, says here in verse 7, Jesus says, if you abide in me. Now let's pause here for a second. If you live in me or dwell in me, or if I am your Lord, if I am your master, if I am your savior, there are tons of verses that Paul wrote about that deal with in him, the in him scriptures. If we're in him, we have all these benefits for being in him. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and savior, you are in him. Praise God. But we can't just stop there because the next, ver or the next part of this verse says, if you abide in me and, that's a conjunction word. Somebody say and. 
That means you can't have one without the other. It's a word that brings two things together. If you abide in me, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you abide in me. Now watch this. And my words abide in you. This is the conditional factor that you have to apply to your life, that his words must abide in you. You abide in him by believing and receiving the substitutionary sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, but now his words must be in you. Okay? Not your words, not Pookie Nim and Ray Ray Nim, not what the boss say, not what CNN says, but his words must abide in me. Oh, everybody, everybody, everybody going to lose their job. That can't be your words. Your words have to be what his words are, which in his words there say, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Whether you work at XYZ Company or not, you know that Jesus has given me life and life more abundantly. These are his words that must abide in us and come out of our mouth. So he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, oh, watch this, you will ask what you desire, not what you need. Oh, follow me here. You're going to ask what you desire, not what you have to have, but what you desire. So if I abide in him and his words abide in me, I will request, make a petition, place a demand upon what I desire. And watch this. And it shall be done for you. Hallelujah. So I'm able by abiding in him and having his words abide in me, make a petition and a request and to solicit what I desire and Jesus promises me that it shall be done for you. So the will of God is for you to abide in him and his words abide in you and then you make a request because his words are your words per the request which is the will of God and if it is the will of God, it shall be done for you and you know it's the will of God because it came from the word of God and the word of God abides in him and you abide in him and his words abide in you. Somebody say amen. amen. If you want something accomplished, we got to get his words in us. We got to say what he says, not like a parrot, but like a man under authority, having delegated power to communicate exactly what God has said through his words. So if I'm weak, I don't walk around saying, I'm so weak, I'm so weak. No, I walk around because the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. So I don't walk around saying, I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. I walk around saying, I am strong. Because his words are abiding in me, and now I make a petition, Lord, I am strong. I receive your healing power. Praise God, because your words abide in me. You said I can ask whatever I desire, and it will be done for me. Hallelujah. I didn't preach myself happy. Glory be to God. This might just be for me today. I don't know, but this is good news because I'm expecting some big things in 2017. I'm expecting some miracles to take place. I'm expecting people to walk up to me and say, how in the world were you able to do that? I, was, I can't tell you how I did it. It was by God's grace, praise God, and his miracle working power that manifested in my life. It ain't nothing that I did. It's everything that he did. That's what I'm expecting this year. I'm expecting people to look around like, how in the world? That, is that the same Devon that, that went to middle school? We went to middle school with? That's the same one. Glory be to God. With God's word in my mouth, declaring things as if it shall be done in my life. That ain't my word for today, but that's good preaching, praise God. Now go to verse 11. Hallelujah. John 15, verse 11. These things I have spoken to you. Jesus is continuing to talk here that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Okay, now this is, this is so very important because here we see the difference between the joy of Jesus and our joy. Now, Jesus literally said that my personal joy I give to you. I want it to remain in you and that your joy may be full. So the catalyst for our joy is the joy of Jesus. Now, now follow me because joy in and of ourself in today's vernacular is, is equated to happiness. So whatever's temporary, 
then, you know, it feels good. The Cowboys won. That feels good. They lost. Oh, it don't feel good. You know, I had joy when they was winning, and now I don't have to. No, no, no. That's just happiness based on temporary things. Some of your Panther fans in here, you've been sad all year. I know. And you, and, but, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. But you've been sad all year. I know. I know. It's all coming to an end today for you. It'll be all over, and you can start a new season. But that's happiness. The joy of the Lord is from the Lord to us. Now, the, the, the catalyst, the uh, motivation for our joy is his joy. Now, you got, you got to get this because he deposited his joy on the inside of us. And we have to allow our joy to come from his joy in order to receive strength. So we all want to be strong, and the enemy wants you weak. The enemy is actually waiting for you to get weak so that he can attack. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may die. What is he looking for? The weaklings. He's looking for the ones that don't show up at church. He's looking for ones that don't listen to the word, the ones that are unaccountable to anybody, the ones that are just, 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 uh, just uh, struggling. He's looking for them so that he can pounce on them. You know, if you did any study on lions, they don't go after the strongest zebra. They're looking for the weak zebra. This is what the enemy's looking for. He's looking for you to be weak. He wants you to cry, oh, it's so bad. Oh, three years, oh, it's so bad. They, that's the one he's looking for. Mm -hmm, that's, that's the one. He's still crying over that. He's getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. But the joy, I'm not talking about you mustering up some joy. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. The joy of Jesus deposited on the inside of you in the fruit of the Spirit that can be demonstrated out of our actions, out of our mouth, out of our countenance, out of our thanksgiving and cheerfulness. That fruit of joy is developed when we have our mouth open with shouts, hallelujah, hallelujah, with singing, with, you know, one definition in the Hebrew is to spin around, praise God, to spin around. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You can't tell me that you're full of joy and you can barely open up your mouth to sing a song. You can barely open up your mouth to say amen or anything like that and then say you're full of joy. You're not full of joy and you're weak. But the joy of the Lord will make you stronger. And we all want to be strong. It's the commandment of God that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The ingredient that allows us to be strong that must be in the pot that we stir is joy. Joy must be in that pot which allows a mixture of strength to come up in and out of that pot in our life. I, I, I'm telling you, I think that we have somehow, some way disregarded joy. And, and this should be an oxymoron. A sad, depressed Christian should be an oxymoron. There should be no such thing as a sad and depressed Christian. Oh, I know I'm gonna step on some toes this morning because we, we like to feel good when we feel sad, you know? Oh, just let me get me a blanket and some cookies and some milk and, and I'm just so sad and I want 12, I want a dozen of those Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> two dozen. You know what? I'm sad. I need two dozen. And it feels so good to feel bad. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. And there's something the enemy knows about that. If he, uh, old Jerry Savelle used to say, if the devil can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. That's right. That's right. It, it, but, but he's after the joy. So why is it you didn't get that job? I went for this job and they didn't give it to me. And all of a sudden, what happens? Whoop, joy just runs on out the door. What, why? So your joy has been attached to either getting a job or not getting a job. So temporary things. I was meeting with a pastor, and I understand his concern. My church hasn't grown the way that it should have grown. It's not where I thought it would be. I understand that, right? Hey, I understand how pastors feel. Oh, it's just not working out the way I thought, and, and I'm not able to do this, and I'm not able to do that. Well, well, here's the thing. That might be the fact of the matter, but the truth of the matter is you got a lot to be joyful about. 
you've got a lot to be thankful for. You, come on somebody, you got a lot. You got a lot to praise God for because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Now, go here with me real quick to Hebrews chapter 12. Woo, glory be to God. The writer of Hebrews, we don't know who the writer of Hebrews is. Some say it's the Apostle Paul, others think it's Barnabas. But whatever, whoever wrote it, he wrote a good book, praise God. And if we look at verse 2, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, he says here, looking unto Jesus. So behold Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus. Think about Jesus, consider Jesus. You're, you're, you're going through a situation that looks very tough. It, it, it looks like it's trying to steal your joy. Look unto Jesus. Now, what are we actually looking at? Are we looking at a man that's just standing around by the river? Oh, that's Jesus. I picture Jesus standing around the river. No, 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 no. What are we looking at? This is what we're looking at. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So he's the one that began it, and he's the one that's going to complete it. Now watch this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3 says, for consider him. Look at him. Behold him. Now watch this. Jesus was able to endure the cross, endure the punishment for you and I for the joy that was set before him. So there was joy that gave him the endurance to continue. There was the joy that was set before him that gave him the stamina to continue. Many of you are going through some things right now and you can't continue and persevere through them. You can't walk through the valley of the shadow of death without joy. Joy is the motivation that was given to him in order to continue. And the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So, uh, no joy, no endurance. No joy, no strength. No joy, no power. Are you with me? So, what exactly was the joy that was set before him? Now, many people have minimize it and say, well, you and I, and that's great. You and I are important, and that's great. But what specifically about you and I? Well, the, what specifically about you and I that gave him so much joy was the reconciliation between God and man. He said, there's a separation between my father and his people. And sin is that separation. And the joy that is set before me, I get an opportunity to eliminate that sin, that, that difference between God and man. I can eliminate it once and for all. Oh, my goodness. Y'all awake this morning. Do you know, praise God, that your sin has been eliminated and the joy that was set before him, he persevered through that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You would be dead in your sins right now on your way to hell. You ain't no good nothing, good for something. You would be on your way to hell if it wasn't for the joy that was set before him. You and I have a reconciliation with the Father, oneness with the Father. You and I being free from all of our fears was the joy that was set for him. Being redeemed from the curse of the law any negative spiritual force and operation, that was the joy that was set before him. So he said, I want to redeem these people from the curse of the law, the curse of sickness and disease. I want to redeem them from that. The curse of poverty, I want to redeem them from that. The curse of being broke, busted, and disgusted, I want to redeem them from that. That was the joy that was set before him. The joy of being delivered from any and all bondage. Yes. That's the joy. My people are bound. They're slaves to whatever they do. Sin has been a master over them, and they are slaves to the sin, and they don't know that I can deliver them from bondage, so I have delivered them from the bondage. That's the joy that was set before him. That he said, let me endure this cross so that my people don't have to be bound anymore. Amen. 
They don't have to be a slave to any master anymore because I've delivered them from bondage. Redemption, deliverance, freedom. These were the joy. These, these all consumed and all came together as the form of joy that was before Jesus that he looked at and he persevered. Now watch this. Any and all that joy that Jesus had that allowed him to get through the ordeal of the cross is, is exactly, oh, <laughs> the Lord's talking to me right now. I'm thinking of something I hadn't even said before. Let me say it this way. Joy was the ingredient that God used to get him out of that grave. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, now follow me. Joy, because joy is strength. Here's the word the Lord gave me for 2017. If you will maintain my joy, you will see my strength. If you will maintain my joy, you will see my strength. So Jesus had joy set before him. Oh, thank you, Lord. And that joy was an element, a factor in the power and resurrection of God from the body of Jesus up and out of that grave, snatched him right on out of hell. And when he took the keys of the kingdom, death, hell, and the grave, the power of God, all because joy was an ingredient in that mixture. Because Jesus had joy, he saw strength. Now watch this. It is the joy of the Lord and everything that was set before Jesus, all the things we talked about, redemption, deliverance, freedom, none of that is temporary. It's all eternal. So the joy he deposited on the inside of us was no, no temper, nothing temporary. It was all eternal. So you could have one of the worst days of your life, but the thought and the realization that I'm free from all my sin, past, present, and future, should fill you with joy. The thought and realization that, praise God, I'm free from bondage, I'm free from sickness and disease, I am not the sick trying to get healed, I am the healed and I'm resisting sickness. That joy should keep you going. The, 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 the joy that, that, that says there that I am not bound anymore by this bondage of financial aspect. I'm, I refuse to be bound. Not one more day. Jesus has set me free. That joy is what caused to cause you to continue. This, this is the joy. I'm not talking about somebody winning a football game. I'm talking about some eternal something eternal. That's the joy that's going to cause us to see strength. The eternal, happiness is temporary, joy is eternal. Joy is always based on something eternal. And what is eternal is what he's done for us. No devil in hell can, can, can change or rearrange what he already did for us. Nobody can snatch you out of his hands. Glory be to God. That's the joy of the Lord. So we always got something to be joyful about. We always got something to be full of cheer about and glad about and have a good countenance about because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Say it with me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's how you get strong. Well, we want to know, well, I'm just feeling so weak, Pastor. I'm feeling so weak. Uh, well, well, brother, get, get some joy going. You don't understand. I'm so weak. I'm weak. Brother, come on. Get some joy going. I'm just weak. You don't understand. I'm weak. I'm weak. Come on, man. Get some joy. I'm trying to give you some adrenaline. I'm trying to get you something that keeps you going on. Praise God. Pastor Allen, you guys know my good friend, Pastor Allen. He, he always asks me, he says every year, Pastor, what is the word for the year? What has the Lord given you? And, and I told him, the Lord told me, if we'll maintain our joy this year, we'll see his strength. Yeah. Strength meaning power. Uh, uh, strength meaning prosperity. Strength meaning uh, stamina, endurance. And here's what he said to me that hit me. I hadn't thought about it this way. He said, so in essence, 2017 may be a difficult year for people. 
I said, he said, so what you're doing is you're giving them the medicine. You're giving them the arsenal to get through 2017 and be stronger than they, when they started in 2017. Every year is an opportunity for it to be a difficult year. Uh, the Bible tells us that in the last day, days, guess what? Difficult times will come. But what's going to give us the opportunity to persevere through those difficult times? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. So I present to you. I wish I could. And when he said it, it made me think. I wish I could say, this is, hallelujah, this is your season. And to make it rhyme and make it all type of stuff. No, no, what I'm telling you right now, there's an opportunity for bad things to happen in 2017. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. And just as if there's an opportunity for bad things to happen, guess what? There's a greater opportunity for something good to happen to you this year. How do we respond to that? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Go to Acts chapter 16. I believe. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We're going to have to expel little Johnny. He keeps acting bad in school. Well, you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I ain't going to let that get me down. Johnny, you're going to get a little spanking when you get home, but I'm going to tell you what. I ain't, I ain't letting it get me down now. I ain't, I ain't going to let you steal my joy. I ain't going to steal my joy. I ain't going to steal my joy. Acts chapter 16. Hallelujah. You know what? Let's just read the whole story. Let's look at verse 16. Luke wrote the book of Acts. Luke is a physician. He traveled around with the Apostle Paul. It says, now it happened as we went to prayer. Now they're on their way to prayer. That a certain slave girl possessed. You know, people are still possessed today. It's not just Bible time. There are people possessed today. With a spirit a divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. So she could... She could predict some things, and it seems like things were working out, not by the Spirit of God, but by a demonic spirit. This girl, verse 17, followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. So these demonic spirits are now somehow preaching the gospel. The only people that are supposed to preach the gospel are you and I, believers. But these demonic spirits now are now following them. These guys, and they probably said it in a screechy, crazy, demonic sounding voice. These guys are preaching the way of salvation. Now watch this. She did this for a long time, many days. But Paul, he was greatly annoyed. He turned and said to the spirit. Now, I paused here when I was studying this out. Do you ever get greatly annoyed? I mean, some of us put up with so much stuff. You just put up with stuff. Just put up with, oh, I was talking to Thomas the other day, and, and somebody was complaining about his back, and went, oh, I just, I hope your back feels better. Now, at some point, somebody needs to get greatly annoyed and command that back to be healed. <laughs> Thomas's back has been healed in our church. He used to sleep with ice packs on his back. We commanded his back to be healed. That thing is gone forever. Hallelujah. Somebody got to say something and get annoyed by it. Hallelujah. So Paul is greatly annoyed. We just put up with it. I guess uh, we were, I was looking at something on Facebook. Somebody was sick. Somebody's child was sick. And then they said, uh, my, the siblings are going to get it. And then they said, I'm about to get it. And then they, and then they wrote to their husband on Facebook. And guess what? You about to get it too. <laughs> so go, they, just, they just cast sickness all around. Why can't I cast healing all around? That cough going to have to go in the name of, I'm tired of hearing that cough. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Oh, I know that might be a little too wild for y'all, but that's Bible. That's Bible. So Paul was greatly annoyed. He turned and said to the spirit. Now, he didn't say to the little girl. He said to the spirit, I command you. Now, won't you please leave us alone? I'm tired. And I tell you, wear me down. No. Because the joy of the Lord is his strength. He spoke with boldness. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. He ain't got no choice. Got to go. 
Verse 19. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities, and they brought them to the magistrates. Now, the magistrates are like the <laughs> religious police, you know. They want to make sure everything is happening <laughs> religiously. <laughs> brought them to the magistrates, and they're like the civil, the civil army, you know. And they said, these men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Now understand, these people, all they did was command a spirit to come out of a little girl. And the, and, and these, and the, and the people, they are so upset because their, their, their prophet has just been lost. Now they dragged them to the religious police. Now all of a sudden they strip them so, and started to beat them. Now this is not American or anything, right? This is what's happening in Bible day. Now look, and, and in some parts of the world it's happening right now. Watch this. In verse 20, and they brought them to the magistrate and said, these men are Jews, you know, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes, commanding them to be beaten with rods. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. So the Bible says they laid many stripes. Many. I mean, there is no number to how many stripes were laid on them. So their clothes are torn off them. They've got these rods, and I don't want you to think like a drumstick. I want you to think like something that has glass and metal inside. And they're hitting them with this kind of tearing their body up. They, they're going through physical punishment. Many lashes across them. And then they commanded the jailer to keep them securely. Watch this. And having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison. The Bible doesn't show us that they got cleaned up or anything. So I believe their backs were bloody. I believe that they had whelps and, and they looking in bad condition. And they get thrown into the dungeon. Into the inner prison, the dungeon. And fastened their feet in the stocks. So their feet are fastened, their back is bleeding, they're in the dungeon. I did, a, I did a little study on the dungeon, the inner prison. It's a place that has no light. There's no light in there. It's dark. And their feet are fastened, they're bloody, they're tired, they've been whipped. And did they do anything wrong? No, they, they cast a demon out of somebody. That's, that's a good thing, right? But they're getting, they're getting punished for, for, for the gospel's sake. Now watch this. Verse 25, but at midnight. Now, I saw something in this story that I'm going to have to control myself before I start doing a jig up here. And um, praise God, I need to communicate clearly. But at midnight, Paul and Silas. Now, let me pause here. They were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, when I first saw this, I kind of saw it as clock struck midnight. They started singing. It's kind of how I kind of saw it. But the Bible says here, it was midnight and they were singing. So they were singing and then the clock struck midnight and they kept singing. Not they started singing at midnight. No, how long had they been singing and praying? A long time since they got there. But then the clock struck midnight. They're singing and praying hymns to God. Can you sing and pray hymns to God and not be full of joy? No, there's no way. So you mean to tell me that in, they were in a dungeon, bloody back, bleeding like crazy, physical pain, and they still had something to be joyful about? Uh, you, your wife just said something crosswise to you and you, you lost all your joy. They still have something to be joyful about in this condition, singing and praying. So they must have known something about the joy of the Lord, that it is their strength. It's the strength that's going to push them through this whole ordeal. The joy of the Lord is what's going to motivate them to keep going. It is the catalyst and the ingredient that is utilized to keep their joy full. 
the joy of the Lord is their strength. So they're singing, they're praying hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Now, on one side, the prisoners could have been very frustrated and upset, like, shut up all that noise, right? It's, it's cold, it's dark, I'm bleeding, you're bleeding. We won't hear all that. They could have they acted that way. Or maybe this could have happened. I went to Jet's Pizza the other day, and I walked in, and everybody looked sad as soon as I walked in. They all the workers were sad, and I came in and like, hey, you know, hey, I was going on up in here, you know, hey, you know, it's New Year's Eve, you know, <laughs> hey, we getting the pizza, you know, and and I'm and they and they were like, oh, hey, 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 and. And I knew they didn't deliver to where I live. And I said, do y'all deliver where I Ooh, we're going to check. We're going to check. You know, you call us. If you need something delivered to where you live, we can do something special for you. Oh, and then one of the ladies turned to me and she said, thank you for bringing. Now watch this. Thank you for bringing so much joy in here. She said, people come in here real sad. And you came in here and just brought joy. So the prisoners were listening to them. Is it possible that they brought joy to the prison. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we've been beaten. We've been busted across the head. We've been lashed and whipped, and we fasted in stocks, and we, a lot of them in there wrong for not even doing the crime. And they brought joy in the prison. Is it possible that joy was in that prison? So they brought joy, and the prisoners were listening to them, and, and because they were singing and praying and joy in the house, there was a suddenly that took place. Hallelujah. No rhyme, no reason, without warning. There was a suddenly, and then a great earthquake shook. The whole place began to shake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were loose. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When they were full of joy, stuff got to moving. There's some things in your life that's got to move. There got to be some shaking take place in your life. There got to be some foundational things that take place in your life. Things that's been the same for a long time, it's time for them to be shook in the name of Jesus. Joy begin to shake. Now, 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 now watch this. Not only were the foundations shook, but all the doors opened up. Doors of opportunity. Ooh, anytime you see doors in scripture, think opportunity. Doors of opportunity. Could it be that while you're just singing and praying and shouting, and things get to shaking and doors of opportunity just fly open at a suddenly moment. Just suddenly, without rhyme or reason, without warning, praise God, that door opened up. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I, I told y'all last year, uh, it's funny to say that now because today's the new year, but last year, an opportunity, I, I got an opportunity to be connected with a UFC champion. The champ, I mean, this is, I'm just singing and praising and praising God, and God says, I want you to connect with him. And through some mutual friends, there was a connection, and now I talk to him often, able to disciple, minister to him, because of joy and God doing the shaking. God can get you connected with anybody, anywhere, at any time. Woo, this is good news. That's what keeps me motivated. Oh, if he did it before, he can do it again. Praise God. Who said that Pastor Devon from a small church in Matthews, North Carolina, can't have the, the ear of the President of the United States? The joy of the Lord is my strength. So a shake, I'm talking about this is a miracle. Do y'all see this miracle? Shaking going on, doors being opened, chains just falling off people's legs and stuff. The keeper of the prison, verse 27, he awoke from, from sleep. He was asleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he's like, what in the world's going on? The prisoners have fled. He drew his sword. He was about to kill himself because he's going he's gonna to die anyway if all the prisoners were gone. They're going to be like, what, what did you do? 
He's about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm. Watch this. For we are all here. Why are they all still there with chains falling off and their doors wide open? Because the presence of the Lord was there. Woo, did you see that? The presence of the Lord. They don't want to leave the presence of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Joy is in that place. The presence of the Lord, the chains have fallen off them. They've been loose. The doors open. Nobody ran out of there crazy. They stayed in the presence. Could it be that you could be in a difficult situation? Anxiety all around you. Craziness all around you. Craziness in your home. But you still full of joy. Can it be that anxiety can be around you but not in you? Could it be that problems can be all around you but joy can be in you? This is what happened here. They had reason to quit, to cry, to whine. But the joy of the Lord strengthened them and changed everything around them. Tears do not change things around you. It's okay to cry, but that ain't changing nothing. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength. Watch this and skip down the verse. Uh, no, let's not skip. Let's just keep reading. 29. Then he called for a light because it was so dark in there. This is the, the keeper, the prison keeper. He ran in, fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? All of a sudden, because a miracle took place, they want to be saved. Right. All of a sudden, what can, I need to know your God. Because what's happened for you, I need for that kind of stuff to happen for me. Instead, we as Christians, well, you, you broke, bust, and disgusted. I'm broke, bust, and disgusted too. You sad, I'm sad. You hurt, I'm hurt. You broken hearted, I'm broken hearted too. You, you, why do I want to be a Christian? It ain't nothing, you ain't got nothing else going on, but the joy of the Lord should be our strength. We should be so full of joy and strong that it looks like, how are y'all so strong? The joy of the Lord is our strength. I want some of that joy. Come on. Let me, let me help deposit some joy on the inside of you. Amen? Now watch this. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 21. You will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and all were in, who were in his house, watch this, and he took them the same hour of the night and watched their stripes, and immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them. And watch this. And he rejoiced. Hallelujah. He rejoiced. Having believed. So there's joy in believing. Having believed in God with all his household. This year is the year of joy and strength. We're going to be talking about this in January. There's so much in me. The Lord's showing me in Scripture that when joy was released through the people of God, strength was released through the hand of God. If we want to see strength, God's strength, happen for us this year, we're going to have to release His joy on the inside of us. The days of being so sad and so depressed and Oh, I'm not saying things can't, can't get to you. I know that things are going to try to jump on you. But keep those things very, very short. Keep those episodes very, very short and to a minimal. And get back on the joy of the Lord and watch God's strength manifest in our life this year. I'm telling you what, for me and my house and those that will receive this word, we are going to see God manifest himself strong in the earth this year. And we're going to maintain, that's the word he said, maintain my joy. So there's going to be obstacles that try to get us out of joy. Maintain my joy, you will see my strength. You'll see my, I want to see the strength of the Lord. I want to see the hand of the Lord. I want to see the power of God manifested. We've seen pockets of it here and there, but I want to see an overflow, are you with me, yeah. of the hand of God that our God's showing himself strong on our behalf. And I believe through his word 
in my studying over this over the last few weeks, that joy is connected with strength. Stand to your feet.